Now stepping back up to line 7, set var cur tickle l index. So you can see that programmatically we are pulling single elements out of a long list and then in line 8 using regular expression we're examining that to see if it matches the condition of the regular expression CLI arg value 2 which is time. So line 7 programmatically pulls the element out of user list making it smaller and also making it a single line then the temp variable using regular expression examines for a true state if it exists in current. So we're searching based on a CLI argument programmatically through a variable for a certain condition. Then we step into the nested if. If temp is true, then show the variable current and if. So if it's not true, it proceeds down to the next line. So stepping back through line 9, if temp is true, then line 10, show the variable cur, line 11, and if. And this if will continue while the line 6 while statement is true. Line 12, we set our variable count to add 1. And as you can see in this line, we're setting var count and we are calling to the count variable. However, we are using an operator to manipulate that variable. We're using the plus operator and we're adding one. Then the while continues. We go back up to line six. While count is less than length and we've gotten that length programmatically from the CLI out length examination function in line three. Continue to do the set var cur, set var temp, and it repeats. Each time the set var count will increment itself and eventually once that length is reached the while loop conditional of while count is less than len will no longer be true and the script will finish. While this is occurring the show var current will display each line that it finds is true. This is emulating the Linux Unix grep functionality for looking for lines with certain strings in them. And we do that through line 8. We're setting var temp TCL regular expression looking for the CLI argument in current, which we have programmatically and intelligently grabbed that element from the user list using our count variable, which is also our control seed. Here we can see an example of the split documentation that was pulled off of the tool command language website. An offline version of the tool command language documentation is available in your extras package. The split function, if you recall from our example in earlier slides, we instructed the split to take in the CLI out and split based on a new line. Now, reading the description, you can figure out how to use the functions, the tool command language functions that are listed in the Extreme Concepts Guide. But if you look down below at the line split comp.music, comp.unix.music, you'll see a little period at the very end. And that is what the split function has been instructed to split on. And if you see the return, it returns comp, unix, music, and it's split based on the periods and created those elements in a list. Here is the command that was referenced when discussing the documentation. Set var, my var, tickle, split, CLI out, new line. If you can see at the very end, encapsulated in the parentheses in the green box, the split CLI out, new line should look now very similar to the documentation for, for tickle. This is brought up for two reasons. One, the tickle implementation or tool command language implementation in Extreme Exos, although encapsulated in parentheses when invoked, is tool command language. The functions do behave per the documentation on the tool command language website. And in this case, per the documentation, we split CLI out as a variable and we tell it to split on a new line. And now you can see the output and it should make more sense.
So what can we do with XOS scripting? It's very extensible. It's powerful. There's a list of examples that's, of course, not all inclusive, but we're going to point out a few. We can quickly rename ports. Create massive numbers of configured VLANs rapidly. Make massive changes. Rapid deployment of switches. Using scripting in the read function or other built-in functions, you can have interactive scripts that help, can help to reduce configuration errors. You can dynamically control the switch behavior, dynamic monitoring of switch activity, and search through variables and display it on the CLI, which we saw in the grep example. Let's go back to dynamic control of switch behavior. In your extras package, there's an extreme XOS script that controls a PoE port. An example of dynamic controlling of switch behavior is a PoE port can be turned on or turned off programmatically based on whether the port is delivering power or whether the port is not delivering power. This is the power of XOS scripting. You can change the behavior of a switch with extreme XOS scripting. Very powerful. To summarize module two, we've discussed a great deal to do with extreme XOS scripting. We've gone over control structures. We've examined the while control structure and the if control structure. We've also brought up the concept that this is the same while and control methodology that almost all scripting and programming languages use. Built-in functions. We've demonstrated and showed read match, uppercase, var exists, we've shown the power that you can en enable in your scripts using these built-in functions. For example, read. You can build interactive questions into your scripts to ask the person who is running the script. We've talked about using scripts. We've gone over the script anatomy of the grep script and how it works. And we've talked about some concepts and some things that you can do with extensible scripting. This concludes module two. Thank you for watching. This is the end of this training module. Visit the Extreme Networks website for information about our other exciting networking products. Extreme Networks. Tomorrow's network. Today.